my name is Azizi. Um, um, yeah, so I grew up in China, um, lived in Canada, <clears throat> Tokyo, US, um, Singapore, Shanghai, um, over my career. And um, started um, <clears throat> finance in 2017 and got pretty lucky. The platform grew really quickly. It's a crypto, it started as a crypto to crypto exchange. Um, now it's uh, an ecosystem of, of things. Um, it's also a fiat to crypto exchange. It's a spot exchange, futures exchange. Um, it has, uh, we have a, uh, the most downloaded crypto wallet. We have the most crypto, most visited crypto information website, CoinMarketCap. Um, we also, yeah, we, have, we also have one of the most active NFT platforms. We just launched a fan token platform. We also support one of the most active blockchains in the space. So now it's an ecosystem of um, uh, crypto platforms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, when you, to be honest, when you when you. When you when you when you reach success, there's always multiple reasons. Uh, there's all you got to do like almost 99 things right, and to fail, you only have to do one thing wrong. But I think you know, it's very fundamental. Um, you have products, uh, you have service, and you have a uh, trust. Um, and I think those are the three key pillars for Binance. Um, on the product side, we do have a superior matching engine, uh, user interface. We support more languages. Uh, we support 32 languages, including Arabic. We have customer support in, in Arabic. Um, we support like we're the first ones to have mobile phone apps, um, etc. On the server side, uh, when we started, uh, mo if you have this issue in you know, price of moving, so we thought that was not so good. Um, so we said maximum one day, ideally an hour. Um, so then the industry followed. The industry has to follow. So we helped to improve that. The most important thing, though, is um, we do uh, we make many decisions to protect our users. Uh, we, we don't just say it. Uh, we make uh, every decision we make. We say, okay, uh, we we need to put our users front and center. Um, and running an exchange, there's many every decision we make have financial implications. So, for example, in 2017, when the Chinese government issued a mandate to uh, re refund ICO uh, projects that are under uh, below the ICO price, uh, we facilitated four ICOs on our platform, and um, the project team doesn't have enough money to refund. We look at the gap was six million dollars total. This is in September 2017. We only raised 15 million US dollars in 2000, uh, July 2017. So like literally a month and a half ago. At that point, we were not profitable. We were like launching a platform, hiring people, spending money. So we have f less than 15 million US dollars in our bank, or in our sort of wallet. And then um, that's the largest single spending we, we did. It took like a half an hour meeting. We said we're going to cover it. So uh, we took our money, $6 million out of 14 something. So 40% of our cash reserves covered the user losses. And did that. Nobody done that before. Nobody done that after. Um, but we we make those hard decisions that we really show our value of protecting users. This is why we have the strong brand name. Users trust us uh, with their with their money. So um, yeah. So I think all of those things are important. There's a fourth factor, which is luck. You have to be a little bit lucky. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think there's a few things. Um, number one, is we want re regulation. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about that, thinking that we don't want regulation. That's totally wrong. Um, and uh, also, given our large size in the, in the industry, uh, when regulators look at this space, they look at us. Uh, it's both positive and negative. Uh, most of the cons uh, most of the warnings that that's issued were consumer warnings saying that Binance is not licensed to exchange uh, to operate in a certain country. That is true, but at the same time, that's probably true for every other single exchange. Um, so very few exchanges are licensed in, to operate in very few countries. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so, uh, but when those warnings come out, it do create a lot, a lot of negative PR. But there's many benefits. Um, given that, given our size, uh, most regulators do communicate with us, and we want to communicate with them because now we can help lead, shape the regulations uh, at least to the best extent we can in this industry. At least we'll have a voice. Whether they, 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 whether they go with our recommendations or not, or with our requests or not, I'm not sure. But at least we have, we have, we have a channel to give feedback. Uh, we think that's very positive. And I think we also think that the industry should be regulated now. Um, I think right now, crypto has less than 2% adoption globally. Um, that 2% that of the early adopters that are willing to deposit money onto a website that's running offshore, uh, no license exchange, uh, etc. Most people. The rest of the 98% people, most of them probably do feel more comfortable depositing money 
onto a licensed exchange by a government body or, or entity. <clears throat> and for centralized exchanges, you need centralized structures to get licensed. Um, and while many diehard crypto fans, the early adopters, don't like to don't like fiat or etc. Today, most of the value is in fiat. In order to bridge to provide that bridge, we need to we need to integrate with a traditional financial system. And uh, having regulatory compliance allows us to do that and allows us to access the other 98 percent of the market. Thirdly, more 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 uh, more selfishly, in a regulated market, the uh, a, the large players remain. Uh, we um, in the crypto space. We in the exchange space specifically. There's a very long tail. Um, based on third-party industry research, we're somewhere around 70% of market share. Our own research put a smaller number on it because we use a larger data set. Um, the second place is like 8%. Third place is like 4 3 But there's thousands or tens of thousands of exchanges in point something percent. Um, in a regulated market, only a few larger players will remain. And that's like, it's actually, it helps us with market share, etc. So we have a lot of advantages um, uh, to gain from uh, from being regulated, and we want to work with regulators to build a very healthy industry. We also have our own frameworks for listing criteria, how we do listing, how we do volume management, how we do customer support. We want to bake those into the regulatory framework that we want to build a healthy industry and make the industry grow. So for us to go from, let's say, 70% market share to 80% market share, we only grow 10%. Whereas if the industry grows 10x, even if we lose some market share, we will grow like 5x or 7x. So we want regulations, and we we're very we, we work very closely with the regulators all around the world, and we have achieved some really amazing results. Uh, one specific instance is the UK FCA issued a warning on June 25th as a consumer warning saying we have no license to operate, which is true. Uh, by August 25th, they issued an update uh, saying that we the firm has complied with all the requirements. Um, the update is boring to cover, so no new, very few me news media covered it. But for the people who understand, um, to within exactly two months, we are able to. Uh, uh, there was so, so much work we we, we done in, in that in, in that period. So, um, so at a high level, we do a number of things now. We we hire a lot of ex regulators we, to become our compliance teams. Um, they come in, they understand, they can communicate in a language that that the ex colleagues understand. They have the trust of their ex colleagues when they when they say something, their ex colleagues believe that. Uh, when I say something, sometimes people are a little bit skeptical from the traditional world. They think I'm a crypto guy. Um, and then uh, uh, we are setting up a centralized structures, you know, uh, proper cap table, proper investors, proper board, proper governance structures, um, and uh, <clears throat> proper office, proper headquarters, etc. So that the regulators find it much easier to work with us. Um, we are taking a much more proactive compliance approach. Um, so before we wait for the regulators to ask us questions. Now we go to them and say, look, um, let us explain everything about us. Uh, this is our legal structure, this is our cap table, this is how we do KYC, AML, security, wallet management, customer support, listing processes, anything else you want to know. Um, so we take that proactive approach, and, and uh, people love that. Uh, most regulators, we, we offer that. They, they feel that's a, not being arrogant, that's a learning opportunity for them to learn more about how, how the largest player operate in this space and how we become large. So, um, so we have a lot of opportunities to, sh to help shape it. Short term, we are also limiting quite a lot of our product offerings, like futures. Uh, we're limiting a lot of different countries that don't like it. Fine. Short term, it's a small hit. It'll get us to the 98% market in the, in the long term. Um, yeah, and so we're doing a lot of things. In, in, uh, uh, we're doing a lot of real concrete action steps um, in this regard, and regulators actually do notice it. The mainstream media do always do like to shed a little bit of a negative light on crypto. Uh, this, like Bitcoin is still used by drug lords uh, in, in most articles. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of uh, skepticism by the uh, sort of people who don't, know, who don't know crypto that well. But that's okay. It will take time to change. Sure. So I would say a few things. Um, I would say getting in a very incremental way. So don't put all your savings into, into crypto right away. Um, that's dangerous on a number of fronts. Um, there's price volatility, there's security risk. You need to learn how to use wallets. You need, how to, you need to learn how to use exchanges. Um, if you don't use your exchanges properly, uh, if your computer gets a virus and the hackers on your computer all the time, then you're going to lose your money. Um, so, um, so start with a small amount of money. Um, say, you know, $100, $1,000. Uh, buy some crypto, buy some Bitcoin, buy some Ethereum, buy some BNB. Transfer it, uh, understand how it works, understand the benefits of it, uh, have, a, have a wallet, understand how to back it up. Once you're comfortable with it, once you understand it and you still like it, 
then increase your increase your investments uh, uh, gradually, step by step. Um, there are a lot of security protocols to, to follow to secure your own cryptocurrencies. Uh, even if you use an exchange, you have to do that. Um, so you learn 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 it over time. Don't go don't go crazy and uh, understand your risk appetite. Um, start with something that if you lose it completely, you're okay with it. As you get more and more confident, uh, more more and more uh, comfortable, you can increase that. Uh, but last message though is. Uh, do try it. If you don't try this today, you will, it's a huge risk not to try it. Uh, you, you, uh, this is a new technology. This is the future. If you don't try it, you risk getting left behind the old world. Um, so not trying it is a huge risk as well. Um, so trying small increments that is, is usually my suggestion.